Tyler is here to talk not just about the face faith-based um, challenges that you're going through, but also they have a very robust food bank. And I want to talk about that and some of the families that are challenging. And I want to hear from the frontline nonprofits, the challenges they're having, how they're meeting them, and how they could help us. So, Pastor Scott, it's all yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Supervisor Anderson. Appreciate your updates as usual. And thanks for the invite to be on this forum. What a treat to see these leaders in the community and uh, to be among them. So yes, you mentioned a pivot that uh, faith-based organizations or churches in particular supervisor were able to make. And the biggest one that we've made is, made is moving all of our services immediately when we started to shelter in place online. Many churches have done that. They've done that effectively. And some churches were not able to do that immediately. So one of the things that we were excited to do at the beginning of this is we had some of our tech producers and team reach out to other churches that did not have their services online and help equip them and empower them to get their worship services online so that they could reach their people and their people could reach us. That's just another way of being for either other churches or people in the Valley. Our, our church is really big on this, this, this model called for the Valley. And what that simply means is for far too long, the church has been known for what it's against. And we want to be known for what we're for. We're for the people of the San Ramon Valley. We're for the first responders, the, the local businesses, the families, the local government, and those types of things. So just an opportunity to be for people. Mr. Mayor, you mentioned the, the food bank. We do have something called For the Valley Fridays. We have them every Friday afternoon between 2 and 5 p.m. And this is an opportunity. We, they have been drives of, of food. We've allowed people to bring their, at first we allowed people to bring their extras, their extra clothing, uh, their extra tents, their extra sleeping bags. Now we've narrowed it because the real need is food. Our primary partner for a food bank is actually Monument Crisis Center out of right. Concord. They do a phenomenal job. And so even this Friday, you can bring your canned goods down. We'll collect them between two and five at our church. It's 222 West El Pintado, right in downtown Danville off Diablo Boulevard, and, or Diablo Road, excuse me. And we can take those for you. But there, I kind of made a little list of the different ways that people could serve during this time. And the food drive, Mr. Mayor, you're right, is one of them. And that partnership, Monument Crisis Center, they do great work. They've been a local mission partner of ours for many, many years. But believe it or not, because people are still sheltering in place right now, I believe and we believe that one of the best ways that people can serve, because that's people are wondering, how can we serve others during this time? I think the best way is to love their neighbors. And I mean their actual next door neighbors. And it could be as simple as asking this question. It's a great question, I think, is what does love require of me? during this time. And it might be as simple as, oh, I'm going to wear my mask when I go out in public. But it also could be, I could reach out and actually get to know our neighbors on a walk and recognize that many of them may be struggling with things like depression or uh, fear. There's a lot of fear in, in our culture, in our community right now. Well, there was a lot of fear at the beginning. Now it is um, transitioning um, among a lot of people into annoyance and anger, and they, they really want to reopen as quickly as possible as some of the goals that we set at the beginning are being achieved. But going on a walk and talking and checking in with your neighbors and seeing ways that you could serve them is a really easy way to love your neighbors right now. And another way you could serve is to support our local businesses. We, we hear about meals at local restaurants that are able to do takeout, but many of those local businesses are actually serving others as well, and you could partner with them. And then the, the last thing that just kind of jumps to my mind is many of the most at-risk people in our community, which are our seniors, have needs either at their homes or their larger group homes. And it could be anything from landscaping to shopping to running errands to a, another and this may seem small, but it's particularly meaningful to people, especially if they're not able to get out during this time or, or receive visitors or have that, that human touch that is so important to people. Handwritten notes is something that we've, we're efforting to do with 
you know, our congregation is very big. It's a few thousand people, but we're, we're efforting as a staff right now to engage every member and regular attender in our church through phone calls and handwritten notes to check in with them personally. And that could do wonders for people that are at your actual next door neighbors. Yeah, I could name a couple other things. We've, we've had a couple of blood drives that have been totally sold out. We have two more set up that are coming up in the coming months, one in June and one in July. Uh, but seniors and we have a counseling center. I've heard from many people, and Dr. Joseph, you would be probably the expert to speak into this, but heard from many that, that anxiety and fear and depression are on the rise. I've heard, and you probably have too, that, that the suicide rates are skyrocketing during this time and people struggling with addictions and that sort of not get able to get the support. But we have a, a counseling center, CPCC, Community Presbyterian Counseling Center, that believe it or not, has been able to pivot to uh, online or Zoom-based counseling very, very quickly. And they have not seen a drop in their, their counseling appointments. As a matter of fact, the last month or two, they've seen an increase over some of the prior months of this year. So we're very glad to be able to offer that type of support and service to our community. Pastor, I wanna thank you for um, outlining what all of our houses of faith are doing here in the Valley. We can't have them all on, but I think having you on and describe the kind of work that all the houses of faith are trying to accomplish and working within the guidelines. Um, thank you for highlighting the mental health issue. There was an article that came out yesterday a lot of physicians at John Muir are actually concerned there are more suicide deaths going on, spiking than actually COVID deaths. And it's something we have to be very, very mindful of and, and incorporate into our decision making. I have a question for uh, Mr. Scott. Um, how do you see faith-based organizations changing the way they provide services in the future? Well, I think the biggest change is the proliferation of online services. I really do think that those are going to go up and they're going to stay up. We, we've just seen like, like 5x the increase in online participation. I think worshiping online will be a, a regular option of the way. I don't think it'll ever replace the gathering, the actual gathering of the physical church, although I do think we're still quite a ways away from that. Um, as I can speak from our church, we're Stephen, we're going to follow the guidelines of the county and, and the follow the guidelines of the government. I, we're not going to get ahead of that. We're not going to open our doors. Ours is one of, if not the largest church in our area. And so we're definitely going to be in the latter phases of opening because of the sheer number of people. So in terms of expectations, I think we're going to end up being the last group to open. And I'm okay with that because we want to be for the people. We're actually we're in an area where uh, if you look at pastors or people that in faith-based organizations as shepherds, which you see in the scriptures, a common uh, a reference for that, we're, we're not really protecting sheep from wolves at this point. We're trying to protect sheep from other sheep. And when you don't know who's infected or not, we're going to be taking great care with social distancing and with, but, but one of the things that you're thinking about what, what makes church gatherings unique is the ability to come in or shake hands or hug or even worship where you're, where you're able to sing out. And, and a lot of those things are not really conducive to wearing a mask or when you can only have eight people in, in a row that seats 20 and you need two rows on each side. And so those types of things make me believe that the gathering of the church is still happening, Stephen, because the church isn't a building. The church is the people, and people are gathering. Right now, it's in their homes. When this next layer of restrictions is lifted, perhaps the, the number of the people can gather with will go to 10 or 20 or something like that. Maybe the next jump will be around 50. The opportunity, I believe, for people to gather in places of worship will be in their homes, which is how the church started if you go back to the beginning of the early church. Great. Thank you.